Hello, good afternoon. It is a Saturday afternoon now. I've just been to little village town um, with a little one here. He's there and been very squeaky. And yeah, it's just been a chilled one, but it's been one of those ones where you know when your day goes about 60% according to plan. I, I was rushed this morning and then came here, but had a good time seeing this bookshop I wanted to go to, of course. And I went to charity shop and I'm trying to get it out. I got this book in charity shop only £1.50 so that was quite good oh he's just eating a treat I've got him <laughs> fair enough because it was a Saturday there was like this local market on and there's like town square thing let's uh, sit down please good boy and I got a slice of rainbow cake and then this really fat ass pan of yeah I've already had a few bites that I've not been able to finish yet but it's just go 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 but plan today but plan today is to wrap up here Go see my brother, I need to get some cash out so I can clean my car because it is a mess. Enjoy the sun where possible. Hopefully read some more of my book, which is Profit Song by Paul Lynch, the Booker Prize. So I'm gonna be doing a like video on the side, so that might be a different one on my YouTube as well. So we'll see how that goes. And I'll try and write. Normally when I'm doing more videos, my writing does go a bit down the pan, but I am hoping that I can get some balance there. So yeah, should be a good day, feeling a lot, be a lot better. I get my words right yeah i'm just happy the sun's out it really boosts everyone's mood and mine i think this one is he agrees very tired aren't you yeah okay so i'm gonna finish this then we'll get through saturday cool so i kind of ended up changing my mind <laughs> that's allowed it is still saturday and instead of doing a separate video from what, what i started on this i thought i'd just throw it all into one of this so as i said i'm gonna try and read profit song I'm currently on halfway through chapter two. I think there are nine chapters. So far, it's really eerie. So I'm just going to try and document what I think after each chapter, maybe. We'll see how hooked I am. My aim is to finish this within a week and maybe do a chapter a day. I don't know, but I've seen really good things about this. And yeah, my boyfriend just finished it. He said it was very bleak so i know that is like a book i really want to read because <laughs> i like those kinds of books so yeah i'm just gonna sit here read what i can whilst my dinner is cooking and yeah just enjoy my saturday it's been pretty productive so let's get reading cool so i've just got to chapter three in prophet song well i've taken the cover off there you go prophet song by paul lynch and you'll see i made some notes during that because i'm like still trying to get my head around it so it follows there aren't going to be many spoilers because i've just opened started the book so about nearly 70 pages in and to be honest not a lot has happened if there are going to be spoilers i'll put a little thing on the screen at any point and it follows eilish and her husband larry and at the start she's washing up and in the middle of the night these guys come to their door and ask for her husband larry and then they're like oh can you come with us like no and then they keep coming back wanting him to speak to them something is happening but we don't know what and i still don't know, really know what's happening i'm also struggling to piece together what the title means what does prophet song actually mean because by certain points points in a book you can work out how the things might relate or like what the book is about but this i have no freaking clue so i'm still pretty in the dark about it but it is so eerie it's given me the handsmaids the hands handmaid's tale vibes from the tv show mainly i like the book but the tv show is like it's a whole other thing so larry didn't go with these people and then this other husband went missing and now larry is missing so that, again this is quite early on and now eilis is having to deal with the children on her own that, that they have and now she's trying to renew her passport but then it seems things are getting taken out of her control and i don't know if it's gonna be like this whole replicating again hands handmaid's tale vibes of this totalitarian state or thinking back to the speech that paul lynch the author did when he won this prize he said like this was such an important book to write and it just came from him because he's worried something like this would happen it was along those lines where like we're in danger of something bad happening and i made my notes because i don't want to lose them before i forget but she's trying to get a passport for her child but then it says Okay, because your guy's in custody, we now need to put you through checks uh, because you're a liability. Along those lines, they're basically trying to make it as difficult as possible, if not impossible. And then it goes on about there's this thing called the GNSB. I don't know if that's like a rebel state that's up and coming. It's set in Ireland, by the way. And I think it's just like 
there's like this way of Irish authors writing that I found where it's either no speech marks or like text is all in one line it's like mushed all together so I'm really I'm slow getting through this book and I'm really struggling to piece together who's saying what at and why when so you have to like you're very in the dark about things should we say so I'm probably not making a, a lot of sense right now because the book doesn't make sense still I'm still trying to work out what's happening and then why we're so in the dark I don't know if it's like because rights are being taken away in this book is it then something similar to that we're experiencing now in real life because people they want to do stuff but rights are being taken away money's being taken away or things are just so unaffordable right now that you feel like you have no control basically imagine a world with no rights and the dialogue is so mushed together there's no describing how anyone's saying anything and it's really like tricky to work anything out like it doesn't give a lot away the reader is having to infer a lot of what is happening and yeah you're just having to, having to gauge the atmosphere and we're in the dark as much as the characters are i have no clue what's happening <laughs> so yeah i'm on chapter three of i think nine chapters i'm gonna take a break for now because it is pretty heavy and eerie like i said it's spooking me out and it's a different genre to anything i've read so far and it is kind of bleak which i understand but there's not a lot else to go on right now so i'm gonna take a bath or i'm gonna have a shower i'm gonna wash my hair at last i'll hopefully come back to this i'll update you but that's where i'm at with this book very in the dark not a lot to say but a lot to say of nothing at the same time we'll come back to that good evening i won't lie it is now over two weeks later one i don't know where that time went and two i've just been putting this book off for a while now so much so i'm balancing you on seven library books and I've got another few beside me as well because this book honestly is just so bleak um I've got another two to balance me out so we've got this one which is much more upbeat but then I am gonna force myself to continue with this one I am I think last time I caught up I was halfway ish yeah these chapters are long and dense there is a lot packed inside them but I really want to take this off in my February reads for the month I was going to give the time but it turns out my watch is still broken so I need to fix that but I think it's gone 11 now so I'll see how much I could fit in before I fall asleep and yeah I've got some days off this week so I might catch up on reading then but my oh gosh it's so bleak but I'm hoping I can actually get a story out of this and figure out what the heck is going on so let's do some reading <laughs> I don't know how long it's been since I recorded that last clip, but I have since finished Prophet Song. Yeah, I finished this at the weekend. It is now the Tuesday. So it's been exactly a month since I first started reading this. 27th of Jan, now 27th of September, uh, February. Why was I going to say September? This, I've written about this on my Instagram in a review and I've got to the point where <laughs> I don't feel smart enough to review this. And I know that sounds absurd, but because... I can appreciate what this book is trying to do, but I can't put into the right words to do it justice. And I've seen a lot of reviews uh, written about this that people just feel they can't do it justice enough because this book is so powerful. And in terms of what it's trying to achieve and the story it's trying to tell, where do I begin? Firstly, I can understand why it won the Booker Prize. It is just, I'm gonna be pausing a lot because <laughs> I don't know where to begin with this. This is harrowing. It's so bleak and I thought I could deal with bleak books, but this just goes beyond belief. It might be bitty, my review, so please bear with me. I love books as it is and Booker Prizes and these types of prizes, I think are, before I thought they were quite pretentious and the fact they seek to exclude people and I don't really know what's going on. I kind of felt that with this, but like I said, I can appreciate what it's trying to do because if you have a chance, I would recommend watching Paul Lynch's acceptance speech for the Booker Prize that he did. And I was just like, in awe of what he was saying it was so relevant and the fact we can kind of see what is going on in here similar to what's going on in real life now as a matter of fact only a few weeks after he gave that speech so this will make more sense if i go into the story i'll try not to give some spoilers away but if you've made it this far thank you 
it's set in Northern Ireland. It starts in a rainy, dark evening and we follow Eilish. She is at home. It's really late at night. I can't remember if she's in bed, in bed or not, but two men knock at the door in the middle of the night and are asking for her husband, Larry. He is like, no, especially when they don't give a reason why he should come with them. And it all just kind of spirals on from there. And we're always kept in the dark, just as much as the characters. And throughout the story, it's like you're at the surface of something and you still quite can't quite get to what it is. But you know something is happening. But that's the whole point because you're with the characters and you don't know what's going on. You're just going through it like they are. So Larry refused to go with these people. He keeps refusing despite being asked and getting phone calls to come in to this certain place. I think it's with the army. I'm not too sure, but Eilish is there looking after her four children. There's talk of signing up for the army, being part of this, is it a resistance? I don't really know. I think it's like near future Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland it's set. There's a war on the horizon, I think. There's uproar. And can we just appreciate the cover? Like how, at first I thought it was like mountains and stuff, but we can clearly see if this is housing, just the fragments and stuff, and we don't really know where to go. I feel I'm already rambling on, but Larry uh, was kept on refusing to go until one day he doesn't come home. Eilish, uh, has, uh, his wife, doesn't know where he's gone. She's calling all around, and then things happen to other men. They keep disappearing. Chaos that happens. People are scrambling for food, scrambling for nappies for their kids and everything. They want to know where everyone is, where their families are, if they're safe or not. And people are being ordered into their houses or they're being asked for their ID. It's so weird and almost dystopian-like because it's like, what is going on? No one knows what's happening and it's never quite clearly said. But something is wrong. It kind of draws on stories of what it could be like to be a refugee in the end. Um, and like I said, with the whole men going dis uh, disappearing and everything, her oldest son, Mark, I think, he is so keen to sign up. And then he dis disappears, but I will leave it there because things aren't all they seem. And yeah, Eilish is left dealing with her children. And then just the end. I felt I couldn't give anything other than five stars for this book, but there were so many questions left unanswered. And that's the whole like literary premise of this. Again, I just don't feel smart enough to describe what happened in this book. I can appreciate what it was trying to do, but I cannot do it justice. Like you just have to read it. And oh my gosh, it was so bleak. <laughs> it was so bleak. Hence why it took me a few weeks to read this. Because normally I would be like going through books like these, but it is dense and the way it's written as well. There are very few paragraphs. I've just turned to that by random, but you can see it's all condensed. Dialogue is all on one line. So you can't tell who's saying what at times. And it's only separated by your full stops or your commas. No speech marks. Sometimes you don't know who these people are. And I'm just going to leave it there. This is a really botched review. But I want to read more of the Booker Prizes. I think my boyfriend's got The Bee Sting. Which was another by another Paul. Paul Murray, I think. And my friends have read it as well. And they said it's so good. So I want to read that as well. That looks really dense, but very challenging. And I'm always up for broadening my reading horizons, I guess. So here we go, another literary type. And I'm really not into those kinds of books. So I'm really stuck. So I try not to give many spoilers away. You have to read it to understand the beauty of what this book is trying to do and highlight how harrowing and bleak the world is and how we should be really concerned about how to deal with all the other things going on. So it was quite a political statement, I find. Otherwise, yes, I can understand this video is a bit fragmented. This is my first time trying to do like a singular book review, but it just turns out I chose the most difficult book there is out there, most likely. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it inspired you to read this or maybe not. Maybe I really ruined it for you. But it, either way, books are there for us to enjoy or be challenged. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far and hit subscribe, that really means a lot. I love seeing that this little growing community is pretty awesome so yeah thank you for your support and i look forward to seeing you in my next video which i hope is a bit better than this one thanks for staying around <laughs>